dear dear students i will be continuing with further part of module 1 with electrical systems so we have seen that the three basic elements of electrical circuits are resistor inductor and capacitor then whatever are the electrical circuits they are analyzed by the application of kirchhoff's voltage and current laws so now we'll consider the rlc sorry lrc series circuit which has been shown in this figure and analyze using kirchhoff's voltage law okay so you can see the circuit diagram of lrc series circuit and a voltage source of e volts is applied the current flowing through the circuit is i and output is taken here as ec across capacitor c okay so this is the series lrc series circuit the governing equations of the system are so we'll have the governing equations of the system for this circuit as l di by dt plus ri plus 1 by c integration minus in sorry infinity to t i dt is equal to e i'll repeat the governing equations of the system are l di by dt plus ri plus 1 by c integration infinity to t i dt so this is taken as equation 2.22 next we can have the output voltage e not is nothing but the voltage across capacitor ec this is ec equal to e not so we can write 1 by c integration infinity to t i dt is equal to e not so e not is equal to ec this is taken as equation 2.23 then whatever are the elemental relationship we can have from these equations then there is one thing to note that inductor and capacitor are storage element and the resistor is the dissipative element in terms of electric charge q so we can write electric charge q is equal to integration i dt so electric charge q we can write as q equal to integration i dt so the above whatever is equation 2.12 you have to refer 2.12 equation 2.12 becomes l d square q by dt square plus r d q by dt plus 1 by c q is equal to e so this is taken as equation 2.24 similarly using kirchhoff's current law we obtain the following equations for lrc parallel circuit which has been shown in this figure below so you can see the circuit diagram of lrc parallel circuit so we can write the equations using kirchhoff's current law so the current applied is i we can write this i is equal to i is equal to c de by dt plus 1 by l integration minus infinity to t e dt plus e by r equal to i so this is taken as equation 2.25 then in terms of magnetic flux linkage phi equal to integration e dt equation 2.25 may be written as c d square phi by dt square plus 1 by r d phi by dt plus 1 by l phi equal to i so this is taken as equation 2.26 so this is the governing equation for lrc parallel circuit okay so this has been written in terms of magnetic flux linkage phi for parallel circuit phi is equal to integration e dt okay so next we'll see about analogous system what are analogous system means we have to take both mechanical systems and electrical system and then compare their equations and something has to be observed so we'll take first mechanical translational system with equation 2.1 and whatever is a relevant figure for that you can refer that figure or we can take mechanical rotational system with equation 2.13 then the diagram for that has been relevant and we will take the electrical system with equation 
2 4 and we'll compare these equations after comparing these equation we can observe that or it is seen that they are of identical form so such systems whose differential equations are of identical form are called analogous systems so the force f which is nothing but torque t in rotational system and voltage e are the analogous variables here so this is called force torque voltage analogy that is fv analogy so there is a list of analogous variables that will be seen with the help of a table okay so this concept of analogous system it is a useful technique for the study of various systems like electrical mechanical thermal liquid level etc why because if the solution of one system is obtained it can be extended to all other systems analogous to it so we have a list of analogous variables in this analogy which is given in this tables so this is a table going to show you the analogous quantities in force that is torque voltage analogy so the leftmost column is mechanical translational system then next we have mechanical rotational system next electrical system so we'll list one by one force f is torque t in rotational electrical it is voltage e then mass m then moment of inertia j it is inductance l in electrical system viscous friction coefficient f is viscous friction coefficient f in rotational it is resistance r in electrical system then spring stiffness k is torsional spring stiffness k in rotational system and in electrical system it is reciprocal of capacitance 1 by c similarly in mechanical translational system we have displacement x rotational system angular displacement theta electrical system charge q then velocity is denoted by x dot it is angular velocity theta dot in rotational system and it is current i in electrical system so that is fe analogy then now we have to go for fi analogy so analogous quantities in force torque current analogy so we'll observe equations 2.1 and 2.3 and equation 2.26 for electrical system and compare them 2.1 and 2.3 are for mechanical 2.26 are for electrical system and we'll compare them they are identical so in this case force f which is torque t and current i are the analogous variable so this is called force that is torque current analogy so list of analogous quantities in this analogy is given in this table so mechanical translational system force f mechanical rotational system torque t electrical system current i then mechanical translational system mass m rotational moment of inertia j electrical system capacitance c mechanical translational system viscous friction coefficient f mechanical rotational system viscous friction coefficient f electrical system reciprocal of resistance 1 by r then in translational system spring stiffness k rotational system torsional spring stiffness k electrical system reciprocal of inductance 1 by l then in translational system displacement x rotational angular displacement it is theta then electrical system magnetic flux linkage lambda then uh, translational system velocity x dot then rotational theta dot angular velocity electrical system voltage e so we have to refer this fi and fe table in order to convert the system from one form to another form okay so what are the steps to solve problems on analogous system one identify all the displacements due to the applied force the elements spring and friction between two moving surfaces cause change in displacement is first step second step draw the equivalent mechanical system based on node basis the elements under same displacement will get connected in parallel under that node each displacement is represented by separate node 
element causing change in displacement that is either friction or spring is always between the two nodes third equation is write the equilibrium equation at each node algebraic sum of all the forces acting at the node is zero so first step in f v analogy use following replacements and rewrite equation f will be v m will be l b will be r k will be 1 by c x will be q x dot will be i dot fifth simulate the equations using loop method number of displacements equal to number of loop currents next step 6 in f analogy use following replacements and rewrite equation f is i m is c b is 1 by r k is 1 by l x is y x dot is e seventh simulate the equation using node basis number of displacements equal to number of node voltages in fact the system will be exactly same as equivalent mechanical system obtained in step 2 with appropriate replacements now we'll take a problem draw the equivalent mechanical system of the given system hence write the set of equilibrium equations for it and obtain electrical analogous circuits using one fv analogy to fi analogy so this is the system given there is a mass with m1 one more mass with m2 spring of stiffness k friction with coefficient b1 two displacements x1 t x2 t force applied is f of t now we'll solve this so this is the equivalent system how to draw the equivalent system how many displacements are there two displacements so first to represent those two displacements with nodes x1 and x2 so this is one displacement this is one displacement replace then in between two displacements what element is present you see b2 friction is present in between x1 t and x2 t so draw b2 in between x1 and x2 then you take node x1 at node x1 what all are there m1 b1 and force so at this x1 you have m1 f of t b1 so at node x1 draw it at x1 we have m1 we have b1 we have f similarly at x2 we have m2 and k m2 and k at x2 so at x2 we have m2 and k then there are two nodes x1 and x2 m1 b1 same displacement okay so you can see m1 b1 same displacement at node x1 m2 k m2 and k same displacement at node x2 so in between x1 and x2 friction present is b2 so we have summation of force f is equal to 0 first we'll write at node 1 so at node 1 what will be the equation f equal to so at node 1 you have f equal to we have to write this okay we'll write the equation f equal to m1 s square x1 plus b1 s x1 plus b2 s x1 minus x2 why because b2 is in between x1 and x2 similarly we'll go for node 2 at node 2 there is no force acting so we have to take zero so at node 2 it is zero because there is no force acting we can write m2 s square x2 plus k x2 plus b2 s x2 minus x1 why we have to write x2 minus x1 because we are starting with node 2 okay now we'll go for a v analogy what is in a v analogy m is l b is r k is 1 by c so we'll substitute in first equation v of s f is v v of s equal to l1 s square q1 plus r1 s q1 plus r2 s q1 minus q2 second equation will be 0 equal to l2 s square q2 plus 1 by c q2 plus r2 s q2 minus q1 so these two equations are written in f e analogy form replacing i of s replacing i of s by s equal to q of s that is i of s is equal to s q of s so substitute in both equations these above two equation so v of s is equal to l1 s1 l1 s i1 plus r1 i1 s plus r2 i2 s minus i1 s second equation zero will be equal to l2 s i2 s plus 1 by sc 
आई टू एस प्लस आर टू आई टू एस माइनस आई वन एस दिस इज लूप टू सो दीज टू इक्वेशन रिप्रेजेंट लूप वन एंड लूप टू सो वी हैव टू ड्रॉ द लूप नाउ टू करंट्स आई वन आई टू टू लूप्स सो डी नॉट आई वन आई टू इन टू लूप्स देन इन लूप वन विच ऑल आर द एलिमेंट्स एल वन इंडक्टर आर वन आर टू इज प्रेजेंट इन बिटवीन टू लूप वन एंड लूप टू सो ड्रॉ आर टू इन बिटवीन लूप वन एंड लूप टू सो इट इज कॉमन टू लूप वन एंड टू लूप टू आर टू इन लूप वन वी हैव एल वन आर वन वोल्टेज सो दिस इज सेकेंड लूप विच ऑल एलिमेंट्स आर प्रेजेंट यू सी एल टू इंडक्टर देन कैपासीटर सी आर टू इज कॉमन टू लूप वन एंड लूप टू सो ऑलरेडी आर टू इज शोन विथ लूप वन एंड लूप टू देन L2 and C are located in loop two. So this is the equivalent electrical circuit using loop analysis. So number of loop currents equal to number of displacements. Next we'll go for FI analogy. In FI analogy, F is I, M is C, B is one by R, K is one by L, X is five. So we'll write the above two equations in FI analogy form. I of S is equal to C1 S square 51 plus 1 by R1 S 51 plus 1 by R2 S 51 minus 52 is equation one. Similarly, second equation zero will be equal to 1 by R2 S 52 minus 51 plus C2 S square 52 plus 1 by L 52. Replacing S 5 of S is equal to V of S. So I of S is equal to C1 S V1 S. Plus V1 S by R1 plus 1 by R2 V1 S minus V2 S is this is node one. Second node equation is zero equal to 1 by R2 V2 of S minus V1 of S plus C2 S V2 of S plus 1 by S L V2 of S. So these two equations are representing node one and node two. So we'll draw the equivalent circuit. first draw two points label them nodes v1 and v2 then you see which element is present in between v1 and v2 you can see r2 resistor is present in between nodes v1 and v2 so r2 is present in between v1 and v2 so at node v1 what all elements are there again r1 c1 current so current i of s r1 c1 r Under node voltage V1, so drawn that. Next you see node V2. Which all elements are there in between node? Under node two, capacitance C2 and inductance L. So R R2 has been already represented. So under V2 we have C2 and L. L is nothing but one by K. We have to write in bracket. What is its equivalent in mechanical form? That is why in bracket for L we have to write one by K. Number of node voltage is equal to number of displacements. So I request all of you to go through this problem, understand the problem. In next lecture again I will continue with the problems.